On the world rugby stage, few were tougher than Totai Kefu, but you're about to see the wallaby hard man in tears. A terrifying home invasion in August has left the devoted husband and father a broken man. Always worried about uh, the kids. <laughs> Always get quite emotional when you talk about your family. We're grateful we didn't die. Todai Kefu was known as a warrior on the rugby field. He never thought his biggest battle would be inside his own home. Kefu forced to defend his family in an altercation that left him with life-threatening injuries. Todai, it was so frightening what you and your family experienced. How are you coping with that mentally at, the, at this point? Um, we have our moments, um, but physically we, we, we're getting by really well. Um, there's the normal stuff like nightmares, probably spontaneous bouts of crying. Uh, we don't sleep too well, but we've been assured that with time that should get better. If I can take you back to that night or very early morning, can you tell me who was the first to confront the intruders? Rach heard some noises downstairs and she turned the lights on straight away. Uh, she kept hearing noises, so she must have thought it was a, a possum. So she went downstairs and she was quite shocked to be confronted by, by two intruders and she, she screamed. Um, so I, I jumped straight out of bed um, and I, I, I actually jumped downstairs from the second floor down to the first floor just to get downstairs quicker. Um, and I was shocked to see um, how young they were. They lunged at Rach and hit her on the arm and that's, where, that's how she got her, her cut. Um, as soon as they did that, I grabbed a stool and just basically charged both of them. Todai's teenage children also got caught up in the violence, which may have escalated even further if not for the bravery of their neighbour, Ben Cannon. I heard Rachel screaming and then I ran and then I was confronted with a pretty horrific scene of, of, of uh, what was going on inside. Did you have any hesitation chasing after this kid and, and tackling him? Were you worried for your own safety? What I heard going on in their home, they were obviously, um, the Kefus were in need and there was no way that I was going to not help. Um, and yeah, the young, the young offender was armed um, and was more than happy to, to try and use it. So even for the period of, you know, at or about five to 10 minutes, the police took to get there, which we, we thought was really quick, um, he was still fighting the whole time. Todd, the very early reports on your condition were very serious. It, they said you were fighting for life straight after the attack. How bad was it? They just couldn't control the bleeding um, and they'd actually sliced um, uh, my liver, which, which, which then I lost a fair bit of blood and they just couldn't control the, or manage the bleeding um, until they actually had to operate. And can I ask how Rachel's doing now? Because I understand she hasn't had any feeling in her arm up until this point, is that right? We're just hoping, fingers crossed, that with therapists and ongoing physiotherapy that they can, over the next six to 12 months, they can get close to what it was normally. Um, we're just not sure yet. We don't know how it's healed and how all the tendons and nerves have, have, have really healed. So um, there's a lot of uncertainty there, which as you could imagine, is eating away at Rach, but she's a trooper. She's, she's doing the best she can. Four teenagers, one aged just 13, have been charged with more than 40 offences, including attempted murder. I think a lot of people, Todd, I were so surprised to hear you say in the days afterwards that you feel sorry for the intruders. Do you still feel that way? They've had a different upbringing to my kids. So there's, there's, there's a problem there with how they're being brought up and I feel sorry for him, I pray for him. Can I ask how an event like this has changed you as a person, Todd I? Certainly, you know, I have my moments moving forward. Um, uh, sleeping's hard, 
Um, always worried about uh, the kids. You're such a devoted father, Todd I. Such a devoted family man. I can't imagine how hard it has been for you to see, to see your kids go through this. Yeah, always, uh, always get quite emotional when you talk about your family. Yeah, I feel really, really sorry for them. Doesn't take away, but I think my anger is more at the system. We crave normal, and the bit that we don't know if we'll ever get back is what we consider normal. Queensland is in the grip of a youth crime crisis. Queensland opposition leader David Chrysofulli. You've got to get to a situation where there are consequences for actions, otherwise you have this revolving door which is the Queensland youth justice system and everyday Queenslanders are the collateral damage. 10% of young people causing 48% of the crime, so um, that's a small group, it's less than 350 at any given time. Assistant Police Commissioner Cheryl Scanlon leads Queensland's Youth Justice Task Force. We've strengthened the legislation and we're very pleased with what we're seeing early on. There is much more to be done, uh, but it's important we do that because uh, we need to minimise the harm that some of that high-end uh, small group of young people, some of the damage they cause in the community. Our community needs to take some ownership and start to take strong action of zero tolerance to this nonsense. Todd I and Ben have been buoyed by the generosity of their local community. We're really lucky. Um, it, it, it gives Rachel especially a massive lift, all the messages of, of getting well soon and, and love. So that's been, it's been fantastic and, and we're really grateful. Before I let you go, I saw a couple of pictures of you in hospital, Todd I, with big buckets of KFC. I just wonder to what extent you credit that with your recovery. <laughs> Never underestimate the healing powers of the Colonel, I always say. Um, I'm still waiting for that sponsorship. Yeah, we're still waiting on that contract with the Dirty Bird, but um, we love the Colonel. I'll put in a phone call to the Colonel for you guys. <laughs> At least we can do. <laughs> Thanks, Sylvia. <laughs>